So, I've got ten minutes for Drew to wax lyrical about his hometown club. It should come easy for him. So, Wigan winning the grand final. I'm starting the shot clock. Ten minutes, away we go. Can I start? Great defensive performance. Oh, it was. And if, if you look back at the, the semi-finals as well, semi-finals and the final, they've only conceded, they, they've only conceded four points. They've been brilliant it's throughout these eights, haven't they, with yeah, regards to all the defence? We're, we're going to put a big emphasis, emphasis on, on D, um, and uh, that, that's been the, the case for, for all the time Wayne's been in charge, and, and that's from when Maguire came over, because he, he he brought that wrestle into the game, and we're going to have kept that. Oh, since. so we've got to play him in, have we? <laughs> of why the game is as slow as it is in the tackle, because of the wrestle. But, but Maguire brought, brought the wrestling and, and that's why we're going to be so dominant in 2010 but then it's it's carried on underway and, and they've, they've just got a desire you've, you've got like Oliver Gildart in, in the centres defending like an absolute monster you, I mean it's a bit it, was a, it, was a, it was a fantastic defensive and what about that Don Manfredi tackle on the um, Tom Line never mind it? never mind the Don Manfredi tackle what about his two tries yeah. what a story yeah. Let, let's get that, that out there I know you've talked he's, to him a few times over the last few weeks oh, I'm, I'm so pleased for him he's, he's, uh, he's, he's been through some very very dark times over these last two years he, he admitted that he was ready to give up uh, rugby league and, and go into a job as a HGV driver which is uh, an astonishing story in itself he said he, this was his last ever crack at rugby league. He said if it didn't work out after that, then he'd have to just uh, quit the game he, he loved so much and, and go into just a normal day-to-day job. And, it, and that, that was sad in itself. It, it literally is a fairy tale story, isn't it, of the, uh, do you of think, the grand final? Do you think he would have gone into part-time rugby, you know, HGV drafted and part-time rugby, or do you think he would have quit rugby league altogether? I think he might, he might have done it all together, to be honest, Dave. Because if it, if he's got that much strain on his knees, it it, it wouldn't have put him in in good health going forwards after his after his playing years. He, and health comes first at the end of the day. I, I come to see him playing. If he, if he couldn't play full time, I, I don't think Don would have played at, at a part time level. I think he he would have just stopped the game. He'd probably still go to games as a fan and go and go and watch his mates at Wigan and maybe Lee as well. But. Uh, uh, a, fa- a fantastic story. I'm, I was so pleased for him. He was, he was close to tears uh, after the full time Uta, and who can blame him? It's an uh, astonishing story. Let's be honest, I mean, he had a damn good game as well, didn't he? I mean, I, I jotted down some stats. I think it was, uh, what, 13 carries, uh, 124 metres, two breaks, two tries, four tackles, including that, that mm. stormer that you mentioned. Uh, he cut, he cut, his, cut his eye open as well. He was, yeah, he looked like the mummy, didn't he, when he come back on? And it like it, was it wasn't on his normal eyebrow, it was actually on his eyelid. And he, he said he had to go off the field and get it stitched up because blood were pouring into his eye. And he couldn't see anything, and that just goes... That goes I bet that would sting, idea. wouldn't it? Um, but he, he came back on five minutes later, just shows how tough, tough rugby league players are. Played uh, an astonishing game, got it through what was at the end with a, a, a try uh, just over two and a half minutes from then. A, a fantastic story, Dave, and uh, I think if the Harry Sunderland uh, voting happened uh, a couple of minutes later, or on the full-time Uta, should we say, I think Don Manfredi would have got it. He got eight votes anyway. Right, okay. got, Stefan Ratchford got 12. Uh, and, but so it was quite, all, all quite the, all an the even split, really. Wasn't well, yeah, it? yeah. All, all the voting were done then before the seventy seventh minute. Um, Sam Hopkins got a vote. Sean O'Loughlin got a vote. George Williams got four votes. I voted for uh, George Williams. Uh, I th- thought he had an outstanding game, one of his best uh, for the Warriors this year. I think he was the best of the four halfbacks, and mm. this is what I kind of want to get on because Warrington could have been playing till now and wouldn't have scored again because they didn't have the yeah. guile and Wigan. Are one of those sides. I know I've been fairly critical, and it's not an easy watch sometimes from a neutral perspective watching Wigan because they don't play that much expansive rugby. A lot of it is very controlled in what they do. They're very effective at what they do. I describe them as being a very effective team. Um, I know I'm sounding like what was that? Uh, what was that thing? Yeah, we are an effective team. It's like me and they. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, there's, a, there's a film there somewhere. I can't think of where it is. They have Tom Cruise in it. Watch many films, media, but not that I'm, not that I'm saying. You know, we'd be yeah. the equivalent of Tom Cruise, yeah. you know, by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, anyway, back on back on this. I mean, Warrington could have been playing until now yeah. and not scored again. For me, though, they played a lot into Wigan's hands because there was only once really they got the ball wide. Uh, they scored off it through Charnley, opening sort of twelve minutes, and then it never got out there again. And I think the blame 
purely goes on those two halfbacks at Warrington. Yeah, they, they didn't have the best game. Either Tyron Roberts didn't play too well, and either they, Kevin Brown, they just didn't come up with much creativity at all. Fair play to the forwards of Warrington. The forwards struck really well. They matched Wigan's forwards. Chris Hill, fantastic again. Um, but Warrington, like, like I said, there was just no creati- creativity. They looked a bit toothless when they got near that Wigan line. And uh, we all know Warrington's strengths, and strengths are, are on the wing. Josh, Josh Charlie, Tom Lynham, both fantastic finishes, both great out of yardage. Bryson Goodwin being one of the best overseas signings this year for me. Um, and, and that's where they, the, the ball needs to go because that's where the strengths are. They need to get it get the, the ball wide. If, it, if, you, if you're picking out two of the best wingers overall at each, at it, out of all the clubs in Super League, Warrington would be right up there with Charlie and Lynham. And, and neither of them, of them saw the ball. It was like the, the week before against the Italians. I know they beat the Italians, but... Josh Charnley didn't, didn't see half as much of the ball as what he's seen all season. No. And uh, um, that's what they've lacked in the, in the last couple of weeks. The, the, the ball just hasn't gone out wide. They, they play central. The Warrington forwards did a great job, but they can only do so much. And uh, the, the wide areas did, just didn't get targeted enough. You said backswing matches and in the large amount. That, mm. That's true because they put the points on the board generally, don't they? Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, I know we've. Have we been too critical of Tyrone Roberts this season? Because I still look at it and I still see it as, listen, he's a, he's a, uh, you know, a marquee player, allegedly. He's getting paid hundreds of thousands of pounds, and he's not delivered. Yeah, no, he's not. And but but like we like I've, I've said a couple of times on the show now, when when he came to Warrington. He wasn't an halfback. He was playing centre for Gold Coast Titans in in the NRL. He played the the major. Obviously, he's played halfback before and he's filled in at halfback. But the majority of the time in uh, 2016 for Gold Coast, he was playing. Uh, 2017 for the Gold Coast. Sorry, he was playing in the centre role. So I, I don't. It's, well, you it's, mentioned 2016 there. He played a bit yeah, of fullback well, in 2016. Exactly. Yeah. He's just a, an all round utility player, and I, I guess it's it's kind of good for Warrington because if if they're lacking it uh, in some positions or got in injuries and he can fill in, in in various positions but he's played half back this year for Warrington he's played nowhere else um, and I think that that's hampered him a little bit I, I think he's a quality player and we've se- we've seen this year that the traits that he does have mm-hmm. when when Wigan, uh, Warrington beat Wigan uh, 23-0 was it in the mm-hmm. Challenge Cup he was great that it day. was fantastic that game he, he ran the show he, sh- he showed a couple of nice dummies he, he burst through the, the Warriors line a couple of times but it's not worked worked out for him uh, this year at Warrington but saying that when your family's not settled there, you're from a complete, you're on the other side of the globe, you, your family's not settled in the country and, you, and you're going home after training each day, they're, they're not settled, they're not they're not feeling happy and, uh, and warm in the area and they're, not, they're just not getting used to life in England, it, it must be hard and it must be hard for, it, for him to, to go in with that train, go into training with that mindset and... Uh, but uh, we, we wish him all the best for next year at, at the Gold Coast. Oh yeah, I mean he'll probably settle straight back in and be a Player of the Year or something again. Yeah. Though, won't he? That, that's right just how it goes. Yeah, fill right back into that centre role. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean I know you've you've uh, kind of summed it up pretty well there. I mean Warrington had three or four of the outstanding forwards in the game on the field. Chris Hill, 23 carries more than anybody else, 171 metres, just less than Stefan Ratchford running from the back. He, le- he left everything out on, on the field, Chris Hill. Daryl uh, Clark. To be, to be fair, whenever I watch Warrington, Chris Hill always stands out mm-hmm. because he just leaves everything he has on the on the field. He walks off and you can see him so physically drained and emotionally drained at the end. It's just because he, he's, he's given everything and it's, it's not come up drunk. Uh, Daryl Clark as well, I thought his second half performance in particular was a lot more sparkier. He, he was taking people on, made 136 metres. Mike Cooper, again, another um, very solid performer. Uh, Jack Hughes, 18 carries, 50 tackles, perpetual motion from him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been outstanding all season. He's been Warrington's real unsung heroes for me. Um, he's played in the back row and he's played a, in the 13 kind of role this, this season for Warrington. He's been fantastic. He makes so many tackles, Dave. It's uh, unbelievable. He, he, 
and he's, he's a bigger frame now than what he used to be. I noticed that earlier on in the season. He's, he's much uh, larger. He's, he's, he's a he's a big he's a solid kind of unit. Isn't yeah, it? he's a very solid unit. Gets stuck in, and uh, he, he breaks line a couple of times going forward. But he's uh, fully deserved that England Knights captaincy. Um, I'm aware that our shot clock is about to go in the next sort of 20 seconds or so. So I just wanted to rattle off a couple of these. For me, Wigan won it off the bench. Uh, Ryan Sutton absolutely superb 20 carries 124 metres 43 tackles Liam Farrell again nice to see him back in the big games on the big stage 14 carries 115 metres 33 tackles decent timing 